And he, Jesus, put forth a parable, those which were, uh, those which were bidden. They're at a feast, and, then, and he's watching them, and then he puts forth this parable. Now listen to the parable. When he marked how they had chose the chief rooms, saying unto them, they can pick the best spots. Well, he's, he's going to tell us. When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room. Don't go to some place and put yourself right in the best spot. You know, sit right up front. Don't do that. Listen to what he says. Lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden to, of him, and he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, Give this play, man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lower room. In other words, you got the best chair, and he comes in with, you know, this more uh, notable person, and you have to hang your head and move to the back because you're in his spot. I, I, I mean, imagine going to a wedding. And there's the bride and the groom, and said, after the wedding, you're going to have a feast. And imagine some guy, nobody even knows who he is, he goes up there and sits down in the best man spot. And then all of a sudden, everybody's like, who's that guy? And the, and the best man's like, where do I sit? And so they go up there and they go, hey, excuse me, you're going to have to move. This is the best man spot. You see what I'm saying? But let's turn the tables, and I think he's going to do that in a second. Yeah, but when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bid thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Thou, uh, then thou shalt have worship. Not worship, but respect. Uh, this is old English. In the presence of them that sit with meat with you. In other words, to eat. Imagine now the best man comes to the wedding. And he sits in some spot over in the corner. And everybody's like, where's the best man? And everybody's waiting. They go, oh, hey, you're supposed to be over here. And everybody, oh, right? Oh, that's the best man. Ah, oh, yes. A whole different ball game. Right? Well, it's just, you know, I have a problem. I've always had a problem with this about the best man. Who's the best man at the wedding? What would you say? The guy getting married. <laughs> I agree with you. Well, he's the second best man. They're going to call him second best man. You, you make a point. You make a point. But anyway, so the point is, is, are we supposed to be climbing up on each other? No. You know, pushing each other side. I'm on it. If I ain't going to get what I'm going to say, I'm leaving. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. That's not Christ-like. That's not what Christ is teaching. That's right. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humble himself shall be exalted. Amen. Now, that's not the only time we're going to see that. But let's, look at this. This is another parable Jesus told. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. That guy up there is a loony. He gets on my nerves. He's got long hair. He looks goofy. And he spake this parable. <clears throat> And this, okay. Two men went up unto the temple to pray, and one, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. And the Pharisee stood and prayed thus to himself, God, I thank thee that I am not like these other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers. Ah, I, 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 or even like this publican. By the way, not, I'm not like that publican. I fast twice the week. And give tithe of all of my all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up his eyes so much into the heaven to see, right? But he smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. That's how we all are to be, right? Amen. We should be smoting on our breast because we're all sinners. Amen. All have fallen short of the glory of God. So that's where we ought to be. That's where I am. I tell you, this man, he's talking about the second one, the one that uh, humbled himself, yes, the publican. This man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself 
shall be exalted. Same lesson, right? And whosoever shall exalt himself. This is in a different place. That's why I'm listing these. Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. And again, and this is in Luke. For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased. And he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Now look at this. This is why we don't need to act like this. Listen to what this is. This is in Isaiah chapter 14. Oh, how thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer. Lucifer, I don't want to be anything like him. Son of the morning, how thou art cut down from the ground which didst weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will exalt. What? Myself. Yeah. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet, this is what God says in response. Thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. You can exalt yourself all you want. You're going to be made a base, right? That's what we're promised. Look at here. Just to prove that father like son, the uh, Antichrist, is supposed to be kind of like the son of Satan, right? Listen to this. This is out of uh, 2 Thessalonians. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall come, for that day shall not come, rather, except there come a falling away first. And what? The man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Perdition means he's judged. There's, he can't. He won't repent. He's judged. Who what? Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Again, this is someone exalting himself. We're not supposed to do that. Look at here. This is interesting. This ties this all together. While I was with them, this is Jesus talking, he's praying to the Father. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that, that, that thou gavest me, I kept. And none of them is lost, but the son of what? Perdition. That's what the Antichrist was called. The son of perdition. That the scriptures might be fulfilled. Who is he talking about? He's talking about Judas. Judas is scary because remember, he, he, had, he kept all his disciples. He didn't lose any of his disciples except for Judas. So he was talking about Judas there. Judas is called the son of perdition and so is the Antichrist and so is Satan. Okay? Judas is another form of the name Judah, which means celebrated or praised. He was celebrated in life. When they saw him coming, he's like, oh, there's that rabbi's, I mean, uh, Pharisee's son. He's this great, he was notable. You know, uh, Miss White says that Judas was the only disciple that Jesus didn't pick. Now, a lot of people go, well, wait a minute, he picked the apostles. Like, the first time I heard that. It's like, he picked the apostles, he picked the twelve. Yeah, but what she's saying is, he didn't pick him as a disciple. He did pick him as an apostle, but he didn't pick him as a disciple. He, Judas came up to him and said, I want to follow you. And there's, I think she says that he is the one that Jesus responded to. Hey, foxes have holes. Birds have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He's trying to discourage Judas. And of course, Judas wasn't discouraged. He went ahead and followed. But he was a man that was praised and looked up to. You see what I'm getting at? Now look here. And yet, concerning Judas, Jesus says... The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for him, for that man that he was never born. It would have been better for Judas that he was never born, even though he was praised all his life. Now look at this. Mary is another form of the name Miriam, which means bitterness. And figuratively, figuratively it means rebellion. She was a sinner, right? It says she was a sinner. She was rebellious. She also had a bitter life. We don't know all the details, but some bad things must have happened to her. Uh, some people think that she was the 
uh, the one that was 